Masculine representing means to me, is it gonna sound corny if I say free? Being masculine to me just means being myself. Um, I don't feel like I have to try to be masculine or feminine, I'm just me. I, I just do things the way I do. It doesn't actually represent anything because I don't think masculinity should be a thing. People believe that masculinity means being misogynist, macho, big, tough, uh, no feelings, no emotions, but the same way we can't, there is not one type of music, there is not just one type of masculinity. Is self-defined. I feel it's not really set in one sort of way of being masculine. For, for me, it's, it's, just a, it's just about how we express ourselves and how we live our lives. Um, but it's both about how I perceive myself and also how other people perceive me. Growing up, I used to think being masculine was like the stereotypical having big muscles or having a six pack, like a low voice, being tall, that kind of thing. But I think as I've got older, I think for me personally, it's more being strong and being able to stick up for yourself and be confident in what you believe in, that kind of thing. I think I like that people assume first, sort of, because when with like gender roles and how like things have been in life, when people see you as like, oh, he's just a guy, he's just a guy, you can kind of stay under the radar. I feel pressure to feel masculine when I'm, just before I'm getting ready to go out, before I get ready, I'm like, okay, I should dress in a certain way because that's what the world like thinks of me. So I grew up in a really strict religious background. Um, so I felt pressured to be more masculine, but as time goes on, I'm becoming more myself and a bit of the feminine element is mixing in my masculinity. So it's a bit of a mix at the moment. I, in now that I'm in my 20s, not so much. I'd probably say only in spaces of like the barbershop or something where you feel you have to sort of, not to come across as too expressive. I would find myself always having to sort of reserve myself almost in those sort of spaces. Often black men are objectified and hypersexualized. They think black men have to be big, muscly, and um, if you're not represent, if you're not basically a representation of that, they're even wondering why you're here. No, I don't feel pressured. I think as I've got older, I think I've learned that you just have to be yourself and you don't have to feel like you have to fit into being masculine or feminine. Like you should just be who you think you should be or who you think you are. Um, at work mainly, um, it's been very positive. Uh, I think I'm out to all my, all of my colleagues, uh, you know, as, as a queer person, as a person who organises queer events. Um, in the world in general, I I've, have had a few incidents of homophobia. It's never really been something that has affected me deeply. I mean, in the day-to-day -day walking down the street in London, it's normally being seen. I guess, I guess I'm red as straight most of the time, which is really interesting. I see myself as a black man first, if I'm being honest. And I'd already know from jump, like people see me from jump like a black man, they see a black man first. I think I've been really lucky because when I was 16, I went to a performing arts school. So in that world, there were a lot of people from all different types of backgrounds, whether it be sexuality, where they're from, like anything. So I got really lucky. I think it's really important to express yourself and have your individual style because growing up, I've never had anyone who look like me now to look up to. I never had any example and I was really lost. And for a very long time, I felt like I was weird. I even thought I had a problem. Closest example I had from me was black woman. I had my mom, my sisters, my aunties, and I was basically just mirroring everything they were saying, doing, wearing. And I want to be that person for someone younger. I want to be able to be that support and that example so they will look up to me and say, okay, I'm going to be fine. Having your own individual style is very important as a gay man because it stands you out again like the media they show you in a different represent they show you the representation of being aggressive but or being gay you have to be very flamboyant or you have to be very masculine or you have to be something that we're not so i think when you have your own style and how important it is to you it sort of shows off your personality people are individuals but we also have this kind of history of, as well we've got our family history we've got our cultural history and i think it's important to kind of blend all of those elements of oneself together as a, 
as a, a person who was born in Britain but from Jamaican and Barbadian heritage. Um, I like to integrate that part into myself, but also going back knowing that I am black and I'm of the African diaspora, kind of integrating that, in, that kind of um, identity into myself and who I am. I feel style is very important. I think clothing is sort of a really sort of political way of of a non-verbal sort of form of signifier or signifier to out, the outside world. Um, it tells a lot about the person from what you wear and how sort of you elicit a response from other people. For me, it's become more and more important to express myself because I feel like I've spent so much time trying not to express myself. I like challenging that notion that, you know, particularly black men who have a very specific uh, narrative within the media, which is very hyper-masculine, there's, there's a whole load of connotations that come with that. So when I can go against that and I feel safe to do so, then I'm, I'm, I want to do that. But I don't think that there's a sense of like community when it comes to masculinity in the scene. Um, one, because depending on if you go on different, depends on what other people identify as what masculine is. And a lot of people will, if you're not like toned or you're not like muscly, then all of a sudden you're not masculine. There's community in masculine, good looking men. You can be masculine and not fly under the radar. There's still a long way to go. Um, there's individual friend groups, but as a whole, I don't think that the community kind of gels. And I think one of those reason, the reasons is because there's still a lot of racism. So, you know, um, people of color and then white people kind of have different aims, different, you know, different hobbies, different interests, different events that they turn to. And there's no real gelled community at the moment, I feel. I think there is small community within our big community, but we don't all come together to support each other and lift each other up. There's a lot of white queer representation, but there's not a lot of queer representation of people of colour. And if there are, there's very few and far between. And it's more like a burden on them. We don't see enough black queer men, black gay men, black bisexual men, same with Asian, and um, I think there is a big lack of that. The only few you will see are going to be either really well-groomed man with no hair, uh, dressed really well, like the guy from Queer Eye, but we're not all like this. So I don't really identify a lot with the representations I see in the media. It's only recently I would say that it has been a bit of a shift in terms of some representations of like queer men, black queer men or queer men in general. Um, things like Moonlight, I think was really amazing. You know, one of the things that I think is very interesting that I, you know, isn't discussed is this separation between gender expression and gender identity and this idea that actually the two don't have to match up in the way that people imagine it to be. So, you know, just because you identify as a, as a man doesn't mean that you have to present in the most masculine way. Um, and for, for me, I feel like the media can play a role in educating people in that without being preachy, just in a way that just allows people to understand actually it's not as clear cut. What gives me strength? My inner confidence, I would say, <laughs> gives me strength each day to sort of overcome the sort of trials and tribulations of being black queer and yeah I guess in today's society. To be honest I don't have a lot of strength <laughs> most of the time but um, my partner gives me strength um, and uh, friends that I've made over the years. Knowing that I'm not alone, knowing that there's other people that understand where I'm coming from, my stories, my struggles and having sort of that circle um, and knowing that I'm not like some weirdo. I'm surrounded by love, so that gives me stress to, strength to like just carry on each day and you know, just put myself out there. There's only one me in this world and life is for the living. <laughs> it's for the living. I find strength in knowing that, okay, yes, things in terms of equality in the UK feel like they're moving slowly. I find strength in the idea that 
things aren't exactly the same as they were 10 years ago. There are a lot of issues that I feel like we're repeating ourselves on. Um, and then some, someone who's maybe more palatable says the same thing and wow, that sounds interesting though we've been saying that for 10 years or longer. Um, so I feel like that's powerful and seeing that and sometimes I take strength in knowing that actually, you know, at some, you know we have moved forward. My mum gives me strength like, as a single parent growing up with twins. Like she did it all on herself and I think watching her and what she did makes me think I can do whatever it is I want to do in life. Yeah, if I, if I could go back in time, I would tell myself, don't be, don't be ashamed of who you are, whether it be as a black person or as a queer person, uh, just embrace the identity. Um, don't, um, don't let other people bully you like you shouldn't, you know, express yourself and be who you, who you are. Do what you want to do, do you. People are going to love you, people are going to hate you regardless. So just keep doing you and I don't know, don't worry, I guess. Unless these bitches are paying your bills, pay them no mind. Like literally pay them no mind. I used to be so worried about looking feminine or laughing too loud, or if I didn't know the f score in football, I'd be like, oh yeah, sorry, I was at the gym last night. <laughs> I would probably tell my younger self to be comfortable being on your own and knowing that you don't have to fit in with whatever, with the crowd. Like, you're fine being on your own. And there's a sort of strength you draw from that. You are able to understand, understand yourself better, I feel I would, would tell my younger self. In terms of advice to my younger self, I think I um, would tell myself to be far more unapologetic um, and um, because I, one, that's probably one of the things I've found strength in as well is I think I'm far more confident in myself because I've c kind of just decided that actually, um, you know, uh, you're, res you're responsible for what you say, but you're not necessarily responsible for the way that people understand it. And once I felt more at ease with that, then I felt actually some of these things that I was holding on to didn't matter. I would say to be unapologetic, don't live in fear. Um, do what makes you happy and chase your dreams. I will tell him to not pay attention to whatever people are saying. Even if it's someone that matter a lot, like a mom or a dad, at the end of the day, you've got one life. It's yours. You never asked to be here. You, like, you owe nothing to nobody. So if you, like, follow your guts. If what you're feeling and if what you believe in is what you really want to do, don't waste time trying to please people because they're not going to be the one tomorrow who are going to put that food on your table or money on your bank account or make you happy.